Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, something called impaired glucose tolerance. Um, another name for it, or another form of it, is impaired fasting glucose. They're basically two pretty similar things. It just depends on whether the fasting glucose is high on a glucose tolerance test or whether the two-hour sugar is high on the glucose tolerance test. I'm just going to call the two of them combined one name. I'm going to call them um, IG, which will be stand for impaired glucose. But the idea here is that the person's sugars are a little bit elevated, but it's not quite diabetes. So a little bit high, it's certainly abnormal, but not quite diabetes. And some people have referred to this as borderline diabetes. Or pre-diabetes. This topic has been, become much more... Um, popular in its discussion nowadays. And the question is why? I mean, if somebody has a sugar that's a little bit high, but it's not quite diabetes, what does it matter? Well, there are a couple things to go over. First of all, just remember this, this concept where type 2 diabetes is caused by two things. If you remember from the comic strips from the website, it's caused by two things. Insulin resistance and a pancreas that's weak. So type 2 diabetes is caused by two things, insulin resistance and a weak pancreas. And impaired glucose is really basically uh, very much the same as diabetes, just it's not quite as strong. The sugars aren't quite as high. So again, if you don't have diabetes and the sugars are high, who cares? Well, imagine this is sort of a, a spectrum of high sugars. Whereas you go further out here, the sugars get higher. So, higher sugars. And in the past, people probably really categorized sugars as either normal or diabetes. So the sugars are either normal, but if the sugars at a certain point are high enough in a person, then you have diabetes. But there's actually this in-between category, what I'm calling impaired glucose. And here, the sugars are a little bit high, but not quite diabetes. A little bit high, not quite diabetes. Uh, as time goes on, though, the, it may progress, and the sugars may become a little bit higher, not quite diabetes, a little higher, not yet diabetes, but then at a certain point it may become diabetes. And basically um, our treatment point, the attack point nowadays for endocrinologists is really to try to go after things here. Once there's any abnormality in the sugars, we tend to try to go after it, treat it, help it. Now the reason is this, <clears throat> you know, when you have diabetes, when you're up in this category, you know, you definitely have the risk for small blood vessel disease, You know, like kidney kidney damage, eye damage, nerve damage, but also you have the risk for uh, large blood vessel disease. So we're talking here stroke and heart attacks. But actually, the risk for the large blood vessel disease encompasses here too. The, uh, the risk for damage from heart attacks and strokes or the, the risk of heart attacks and strokes dramatically ramps up not only when you have diabetes but also in this impaired glucose tolerance territory. And if we can um, arrest the sugars here and or push them back down to the normal range somehow, that may lower the risk for large blood vessel disease. Also, by pushing the sugars down in this territory, it may prevent the diabetes from, or may prevent 
uh, it from progressing or it may delay the progression into diabetes. A very high percentage of people with impaired glucose, impaired glucose tolerance will end up with diabetes eventually. And one of the reasons is that um, of course this is caused, like diabetes is caused by two things, insulin resistance and a weak pancreas. This is also caused by insulin resistance and a weak pancreas. But as you get older, the pancreas will tend to inevitably get weaker and it will tend to push you towards diabetes and other factors, anything that might influence insulin resistance like an increase in weight or um, a decrease in a person's activity when they become more sedentary, that may push it upwards as well. Now remember, one of the concepts too, you know, you say, well, why, why do you go after the impaired glucose tolerance, you know, even though it's so mild? Well, you know, there's this thing you talk about, people talk about, well, you know, if you have the liver here, and this is the thyroid, and this is the pancreas. You know, they say, well, you know, if you knock out a lot of the liver function or remove part of the liver, well, it still works. Or if you remove half of the thyroid, that usually still works, what's left over. And it's similar, too, for the pancreas. You knock out a lot of the pancreas, it still works. Which means that when you get to a point where the sugars are abnormal at all, even mildly, the pancreas is already pretty weak, and you're pretty far down towards the road of the whole uh, diabetes um, problem. And so when you get to this point, the pancreas is already pretty weak. You already have significant insulin resistance. So this is the time to act. The main treatment, of course, to try to either keep somebody here and prevent it from turning into diabetes or even to push it downward, the number one treatment is diet and exercise. But if that doesn't work in getting things down, then medications can be used as well. And it has been proven that if you take someone in this territory, impaired glucose territory, and give them certain medications, it may prevent it from becoming diabetes. Also diet and exercise in this stage may prevent it from turning into diabetes. So you may kind of arrest it. And it's sort of like a stitch in time may save nine when you use a, some diet and exercise or just one medication or you know the combination thereof you may prevent it from getting turning into diabetes or bad diabetes and uh, you may prevent a person from needing three medicines and insulin or you know or one medicine and insulin so you may be able by acting early delay things or prevent them uh, both the progression of diabetes as well as heart attacks and strokes the end.